But let's take a look at the US. US isn't in a recession now, it's had a reasonable time and it's actually um, got better growth, certainly better growth than, uh, than Europe and better growth than the UK. But we're in the seventh year of an economic upturn. And unlike last year's taper tantrum, when markets threw a wobbly because rates looked as if they were going up and went up very, very slightly, they look to be able to take a temper tra tantrum, a, temp a, a rate rise in their stride. The dollar remains on a strong bull run, but the real issue is that 2017 could turn out to be incredibly eventful. USA has 100% debt, national debt to GDP. Donald Trump has inherited a 19.6 trillion government deficit. Now the Republicans control the House, Congress, and also the Senate. But what he's going to have to do is to move the Republicans away from one or more of their core principles. And their core principles are less government is good, deficits are bad, lower taxes are better than higher taxes, and free trade is good. There are similarities with the position when Ronald Reagan came to power in 1981. Similar contradictions, because he came to power during a double-dip recession, and there was a Democratic Congress, not a Republican one. Reagan's agenda was free markets, free trade, but he ran up a massive deficit. Massive deficit. And he turned into a Keynesian. He spent money like mad. Think of the, arm, uh, uh, the arms race, for example. But in 1981, US debt to GDP was, uh, was less than 40%. And as I've just said, today, it's 100%. So now there's very little headroom. And in March 2017, Congress votes on raising the debt ceiling due to the annual increase in the deficit alone, which over 10 years is going to take the debt ceiling up to 25 trillion. So he has a massive, massive uphill battle. Donald Trump is promising an economic revival plan which can only really be accomplished, accompli accomplished by more spending. The chances are he's not going to get it. So this alternative is massive tax reductions, and the tax reductions will not be to the benefit of middle America who pay little income tax, they'll be to the benefit of the wealthy. And it won't be the people that will have supported Trump. So his base support could recede unless he gets results. And if he doesn't get things through, there's the prospect of a government shutdown. He's not going to get any help from Janet Yellen at the Fed. He severely criticised her. He may have to uh, go back on that one. But they want higher rates. And the people that uh, Trump is bringing in, from Goldman Sachs and the like, they want low rates. The Fed want higher rates because when the next downturn comes, they'll be out of ammunition to fight the recession. So Wall Street wants to ride the wave of higher growth and higher inflation. Now the current multiples on the US stock market are in excess of 25 times PE ratio. This is on the SP500. So it's already well above the historical average. But we see the risks increasing. And the recent reports that we're hearing from IFS and many other uh, um, uh, international monetary, monetary fund are that there's a slowing global economy and there's stagnant wage growth. So the bottom line is this. Unless corporate earnings can see a good opportunity to increase, and we see this in the bottom line results, and we see profits rise, current levels everywhere are simply too high in markets. And what they're doing is riding a wave, in, a wave of hope. So, asset allocation. What should we be doing? Now, what, what I say to clients is if you're taking a long-term view and if you have a diversified portfolio and you can weather the storm, then ride it out. But if you're close to a situation in life where you don't want the risk 
and you don't want you don't see yourself as riding out 10 15 or 20 years with with investments then it's never a bad time to take some profit now one example of that is advice we're giving on a fund called uh, Fundsmith it's uh, managed by Terry Smith he's a well-known fund manager we've listened to him we've met him <coughs> we've invested in him and we love the fund it's been incredibly successful he concentrates on 30 stocks and they're all effectively US stocks all the big brand names coca-cola etc etc doing doing uh, doing extremely well the fund has increased by over 100% in three years. If you look at the chart since he's been managing, since he launched the fund, which is not that long ago, it it's just goes straight up. But what goes straight up like that has to come down. And the other thing that we've seen is that he's advertising everywhere. So he's getting more money in. And whenever we see a fund getting more money in, put a lot, putting in lots of advertising, it's time to get out. So <laughs> what I would suggest is that the risks are increasing and it's, it's not a bad idea to take profit. It's a tactical and a prudent move. So we say lighten up. We say take some risk off the table. We continue to favour good quality stocks and good value and to look for opportunities with fund managers that are buying value. But it's going to be a very difficult year. We do like real assets. We know that there are problems with the uh, acquisition costs, as, as uh, Cormac has explained. But we like land, we like residential investment. I know that they're high, but if you're not highly geared, it's, it's, uh, it's still a good long-term uh, and sound investment.